Hi YouTube, Neville Aga here, and today we're going to talk about Cisco Sourcefire embedded into the ASA 5515X. This is part one of a two-part series that I'm going to do. I've recently been able to get Lab Sourcefire and Lab Landcope licenses, and we're going to compare those to what they see from a network visualization standpoint and a security standpoint. So first today, the Sourcefire built into the ASA. So let's come look at that lab. So here is the actual 5515X on top, the black one. Here is the SSD that you have to have in order to put the source fire image. There's the front panel of it. Here is the one it's replacing. It's replacing this 5510 down here in the lab. So if you look at the back panel of it, it comes with some more ports. It comes with uh, 8 gig ports and also the management port on this side. Here's a view of the back of the 5515X um, schematically and that management interface. So one important thing is that has to be cabled up, this dedicated management port down here. Um, in traditional ASA, you can just use the inside, you can assign these interfaces here to inside and outside and then do in-band uh, management, SSH into the uh, inside interface. Can't do that with the source file module. The source file module expects to communicate on that port. So that's one thing that has to be cabled up. All right, so let's now go to the interface for it and take a look at it. So first, let's go into the ASA. So here is the ASA. And if you look at this, this is all just copied straight from the config I had on the 5510. All that we had to add to get the source fire up and going is we created an ACL that matched anything, and then this class here. This um, in the policy map global policy, we have a class for source fire C map, which is this guy here, which is matching this ACL to source fire redirect ACL. That ACL is just an allow any any, because right now I'm just trying to send all the traffic through the ASA to the source fire module. Um, okay, so there it is, and then we have this command here: SFR fail open. So what that means is uh, send stuff to the source fire module. If the source fire module, for whatever reason, is not working or something like that, then fail open. Don't just black hole the traffic, but just allow it to pass through, come back and pass through. Yeah, if I want to actually get into the source fire model, I do a session, SFR, and then it's console. I'll actually do that in a separate one so we can have both of them up and going at the same time. So here. And then we can do a session SFR console. All right, and then I believe the default is admin and source fire, maybe with a capital S, or it might be admin, admin one, two, three, something like that. Um, I believe it actually changes after you install it the first time. The first time it's admin, and then like a Cisco one, two, three, or an admin one, two, three, or an admin with capital A. And then after you go through the initial setup, then it changes it to source fire with a capital S. All right, and then from here on the source fire module itself, you can see I can do just some basic show commands. I can do um, show version on that, see what we're getting up and running. So it just gives me that I have a 5525 uh, version 5.4. All right. Uh, so, I've lied to you, it's a 5525X, not a 5515X. And then on here, so one thing you can do is here, if I look at that class map, so let's go into this. This is my global policy. So, config T, policy map, and then let's put in the global policy, which is this one right here. Edit, paste that selection. And I want to go to a class of my source fire here, in here. Um, where is that? Class, here it is, SFR CMAP. And then I can do an SFR fail open. 
and then monitor only. If I wanted to just send traffic and not actually have SourceFire do anything with it, I would put it in as monitor only. Um, but I can't do that right now because I'm already in line. But that's fine. I've had it in for a few days. It's not uh, doing any causing any problems, so I've switched it from a monitor only to a, a full one so I can take actions on the SourceFire side of it. That's really all you have to do on the ASA side of it. Now, on the SourceFire side of it, what you do need to do is you do need to tell it where it's going to. So if I do a show, I'm going to configure, configure um, my manager. So that's the defense center that I'm going to report up into. So let's see what I actually have in here. So show, do I have a show manager? Uh, show managers. Okay. All right, and there we go. So I have a manager at that address, and I'm sending all my events from the SourceFire module on this ASA to that manager. Let's go look at that manager. So to do that, you go on to cisco.com and you download um, SourceFire Defense Center Manager. It's an OVA that you apply up into your, your vSphere environment. So it's this guy right here. I have the 64-bit one of them. All right, and then we just have a un basically a Unix um, environment in here uh, for our virtual defense center. We web into it really. So if config one of my or uh, well, sudo if config eight one seven forty. I believe I'm also mapped to. An address so I can go up in here. So I showed you the wrong one. We need to show you the 5525x. All right, there we go. And there we go. There's my eight gigabit ports and my one dedicated management port up here. But let's go to our defense center. So if I go to source fire, what I have I have registered here, and then we're presented up with this page. All right. And if we log in, the first one we're going to see is a summary dashboard by network. And as you can see, it, it categorizes um, applications over time. Now, by lab, this is our, my home network, and so I'm monitoring my home network to see what's up in here. Um, 12 gig versus of Amazon Instant Video delivered in the last few days, a bunch of iTunes, a bunch of ESPN, CNBC, and uh, it will categorize all these as very low risk to very high risk, and exactly how many bytes are, are what of each. It will also do um, OS mapping, passive OS mapping from the old, uh, old SourceFire RNA type days to tell you that, oh, these boxes are Linux and OS. And right now my policy is actually monitoring the whole Internet, so um, it's... Anything that goes to and from, it's monitoring what that's coming from. That was another um, stumbling block for me. Under policies, I believe it's policies access control. You can see here, so I have this default network discovery uh, put in, and if I edit it out, All right, I have this default. I have I don't have any specific rules for any zones into or anything else like that. I just have this defa default action, which is intrusion prevention, everything. Um, initially, it was nothing. So essentially, all the traffic was coming to the source fire module on the on the ASA. That source fire module was sending all its data to the manager, but the manager said, "I don't care," and just dumped it all essentially. So at least you start with the network discovery only. And then that fills in those two sheets on the um, on the the overview tab that should, that do the OS mapping. But now I have a actual a uh, passive policy, so I can't really block anything. I'm going to change it out to an inline policy here, and I am going to save and apply that. 
And that way, I can at least, if something is going on that I don't that I want to block, I will be able to block that. So we'll let that apply, and that'll go from here to the uh, defense center, to the to the uh, source fire module on that 5525x. As for IPs, I should show that too. So the ASA show interface IP brief. If you look at it, it's inside interfaces here at 81103. It's outside interfaces at 7164. Um, and I have this management configured. I don't really, I'm not really using this. I never used this on the ASA. That's really only there. That doesn't even need to really be there. But I just have that network for the um, source fire. And I think I've even changed it from 192. So in the past, I just had this inside and outside. That's not really good enough for source fire. If I go back into source fire and I look at it, I say show my IP. Let's see. There we go. And if you look at it, my ETH0, which is this management, is on, on 81745. My defense center here is at 81740. So I have a layer 2 connection straight from the management to the same, um, the same network here. And that's how the two communicate through that management port on the, the ASA. All right, back onto the source fire. So that's applied. You can go look at it here and say, yeah, verily, it's pushed to, to 81745. It's completed. All right, and then if I go back into my overview on the dashboards, So some of the stuff I can see, I can drill down into all of these. It's a little more, more interesting than just the flat out. This is the, you know, who's using what, who's using, so 12 gig via Amazon Instant Video, like I was saying, versus the rest. Okay, that's great. What are actual threats to the network? So you click over here, and we have this indications of compromise by host. And also with geolocation. So this is good stuff here. This 8.1 is my network. The, uh, yeah, I don't use 10.1, I use 8.1. That's just what I do. Um, the 5.135, the 46.19, these are all places out on the internet that are attacking. And if you look at it, let, let's take um, let's take this host here. This is running a blog server. This is 81721. And it says I have an impact to attack. And if you see what an impact to attack is, um, what that means, impact to is that we saw this attack happen, and potentially we mapped your blog server, and it's potentially vulnerable to this. So that's just really bad, obviously, and you want to take some action against it. All right, so we can see that. Down here, so this is everything. So on my blog server, just port 80 is open. Nothing else is open. Uh, a couple applications here, HTTPS, found it. It by it sees that I have all these various vulnerabilities by scanning it. It's 3.5, and I'm running 4.0. So actually, I don't think it's vulnerable. But you know, this is how you can uh, see it, and you can drill down into any of these things in here. So let's drill down into it. All right, there is the person that is doing it. And there is their source port, destination port. Here is a specific message. This is, this is the WordPress XML RPC potential port scan attempt. Um, WordPress is running on the server, but not. But this particular version is, is immune to that. But if you want to get some more details into it, I believe you can right-click it, and you can see um, rule documentation right here. Um, before 351 allows remote attackers and HP requests, crafted URLs for a ping back, everything it's vulnerable in. So really good, really, really quick uh, information on what you potentially see and what you need to take, uh, take issue with. All right, that's it for right now. I do also have in here, if I look at my um, system and the licenses, I've put in um, 